Is there anything better than steel for swords? Not really, and here's why. There are two massive factors for the use of a material with swords, strength and toughness. In this case, strength refers to how much effort is needed to deform a material. Take this Play-Doh. It does not take that much effort at all to bend it because this material has a low strength. However, toughness is resistance to cracking, essentially. This Play-Doh isn't catastrophically cracked when you bend it, so its toughness is higher than its strength. But check out this stock photo of a pencil. I'm pretty sure we all know how easy it is to snap a pencil in half, but as you bend it until you get to that point, it doesn't really change form too much. It can't permanently bend as easily as Play-Doh, but it has a lower toughness because it's easier to make a catastrophic crack in it. So that's toughness and strength, and this is a variation of the Ashby diagram for material properties. Play-Doh and pasta would be really low in both strength and toughness, but as we go higher up, we find things that are tougher and stronger. Steel is not the strongest. Ceramics are far stronger, and steel isn't the toughest. Rubbers and polymers resist fracture far better. However, steel is in that balanced sweet spot of toughness and strength. It resists both breakage and flex the best of anything. So that's why we use steel for swords and a ton of other things. Well, that and iron and carbon are really abundant on Earth, and we can form steel with a level of heat that's pretty easily achievable.